good day and welcome back and so today we're going to talk about statements and expressions now um if you were taking a college level computer science class they would have covered these concepts early on what types of statements they are what are expressions and so on and they even give you a whole syntax diagram um a bnf um notation of what it is and i'm not going to explain bnf if you weren't curious you can go and google and type bnf and there's a nice number of ex examples in wikipedia and so on and i'm not going to spend too much time describing the different types of statements in javascript area i put some links below because the job um, the mozilla developers network does a really nice job of explaining them and showing you examples so i don't want to make these videos longer by um we're doing the excellent work they've done not to mention i probably do a crappy job of it and so what i'm hoping is that if you have questions about something you let me know and then you could say well i looked at that and i didn't get it or i read it i didn't get it can you try and explain it to me and then i can spend more time in places that um, you need help instead of you know um, on things that just reproducing the same thing um, same thing with expressions i'm not going to cover every type of expressions but I am going to spend some time on some expressions because I think that's important again where I think it's important I'll spend some time and you can tell me if I'm wrong by letting me know if you understand it or not all right so let's get into it okay so as you know and I mentioned before that when you write a program you write a number of statements so your program is made up of a number of statements now, you also write different types of statements, right? Some of them are if statements, um, some of them are function statements, and uh, the list goes on. And they're actually statements that we haven't been introduced to yet. But what I wanted to focus on is the different types of statements. So those, some of those statements, you can consider them expressions, and we're gonna get into what an expression is in a minute. Some are not expressions. And once we know what an expression is, we're going to know what, what a, a non-expression is. And so many statements contain, contain expressions. Now, uh, before, again, we're going to talk about what these expressions are, and it's going to make sense. But the important thing to remember here, too, is that for your program, you can have a statement that spans multiple lines, or you can have multiple statements on one line, in which case you're required to put a semicolon between the statement, because that's how um, the programming language you knows when you put a semicolon that... Um, you finish one statement. And then if you don't put a semicolon, then that statement must be on a line by itself. An expression is something that's once evaluated or once it um, goes through some computation, it produces a value. Now that's not the case with every statement, okay? You can write statements that once they're computed evaluated and they don't really produce a value. You might see a result, you know, like the print statement, for example. The computer goes through that and it, generate some results for the user, um, but it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't produce a value in the sense that you can assign it and store it anywhere. Can remember what we said about values, and I went back and got a slide from before. We said that a value is something that um, gets calculated and you can assign it or label it with a variable, right? So then we said variables are an abstraction for giving a name to an, a value so you can recall it and then we, we said a value is something that you can compute right so an expression is that thing that give you that value and so here are some examples of expressions and so um so we have simple or single value expressions and so that's like your five or some string that's you know or literal some people call them and then we have a mathematical expressions of course and that's because they include the mathematical operators um, the last one there in the medical, medical example, um, the I++ plus plus is the one that we introduced and said it's a shortcut for like I equals to I plus one. Um, and that's a mathematical thing too. It's an increment operator, it's actually called. But we put, I put it in there with a medical expression. Um, relational operators, you know, you're less than, greater than, not equals to, uh, greater than, equal to, less than, equals to. Your logical operators, um, you know, true, false, and not. Uh, bitwise operators, which we're not really going to talk about in JavaScript, really. Uh, when we do C, assembly, C++, Go, and so on, we probably talk about it. But maybe not even Go, but whatever. And functional, and that's functional expression. And okay, you can assign that value. Okay. So, okay, so let's look at the first logical operator. And this one is the AND. And basically, um, the simplest way to look at it is if you take uh, two statements or two operands, 
and you apply it to the AND operator, it tells you whether um, the end result is true or false. And the rule it used for that is if both statements are true, then the result is true. If either one of those statements are false or both are false, then the end result is false. And that's basically it. So this table here shows you the rule used for evaluating the AND op op um, logical operator. And the way we do it like that in JavaScript is with the double ampersand for AND. Okay. Next. Um, logical operator we're going to look at it is the OR, and we donate that with the double um, vertical bars. And uh, yeah, right side of the keyboard there above return key. And the true table for that is um, slightly different. It basically says if you have a number of statements, but let's start with two, because uh, you can extend this to add any number of statements you really want, this and the AND statement. But if um, any one of those statements is true, then the entire statement is considered true. And the only time an OR statement is false is if all the statements are false, all right? So um, that's the difference there between the AND and OR. Finally, we have the NOT or NEGATE operator. And we use a BANG or factorial, depending on who you are and where you learn this particular character. But it just means the opposite of, right? So it's like if I'm say, I'm going to work. I can say, I'm not going to work. It means the opposite, right? And so if a statement uh, or an expression is true and you use the negate operator in front of it, then you change the meaning from true to false and vice versa. If something would not would otherwise evaluate as the false, and you put the not operator and the negate operator in front of it, that would turn into true. And we'll see example of using that later on. Um, again, so a contrived example, but from our previous um, code, I took, I revisited it, and I'll show you how to use logical and uh, operators. Okay, so let's look at this example. This is from back in chat, um, section 17. When we wanted to print out um, a, a message if the last digit of time was um, the number 2, 5, and 9. And the reason why we have to make it as a string, by the way, is because we get the time back as a string. So anyway, so I went back and took that example, and I'm going to use, instead of using a case statement with fall true, I just put several expressions in my if statement. So now this is an if statement that is not an expression itself, but I, this statement can contain expressions, and so I put multiple statements in there, and look at the different parts. I test to see if it's equals to true, or it's equals to 5, or it's equals to 9, because if any one of that is true, then I want to print out a message. If it's not, then I print something else. As you can see, this looks slightly more compact than the previous one, but then you have to make that decision as a programmer when you want to use more complex if statements or you want to use a case statement or something that would, would, would seem to be easier to understand or for maintainability. The next example I want to look at is um, using the negate operator. And what I did is went back to section 18 and pulled out this loop example we had where we want to skip um, printing out counts for uh, when the count is 2, 5, and 8. And the way I'm going to do that is I have two exact possible solutions here with the if statement. And I'm not going to spend too much time on the code because you could just run it and take it and examine it, examine it. But the one that's not commented, which is the one on line 9, and I'll tell you what you're going to do with the one for line 8. But for line 9, I'm going to represent this in this um, table here, which you call a truth table. And I'm saying if um, these are all the value of count, all the values of count, or the possible values of count, ranging from 0 to 9. And I'm going to say, if count is equal to 0, and I'm test the first condition, well, 0 is equal to 2, that's false. And uh, is 0 equals to 5, that's false. Is 0 equals to 8, that's false. But because we have a negate on the entire expression, that gives us a true. So the end result is true, and our statement then will execute. Um, you know, for the case of zero. And we could do the same thing with one, and we'll see that it's also execute. When count is equal to two, we'll see that the first expression is going to give us a true. Now, because this is an OR um, logical operator, it once it finds a true in one of the statements, it doesn't care about the rest. You can remember, uh, for OR, if one statement is true, the entire thing is true. So there's no point in evaluating the other two. So it's going to say, oh, I think this entire statement is true. But because we have a negate around that, that's going to be false. And so our if statement will not execute, hence skip in 2. And you could continue on and you'll see it how it'll skip 5 and it'll skip 8 just as we intended. Okay? Now, you can use the same example and go back and reevaluate the commented out expression I have, which is on line 8. 
and you put it in a table like this and you'll see that it will also work the exact same way even though the two statements look very very the two if statement look very different their conditions the end result would be the same all right okay so again if you have questions post them if this is not understandable or whatever or if it makes sense great i appreciate it the feedback too but thank you for your time i hope you i was able to teach you something um or at least point you in a direction where you can learn <laughs> if i wasn't able to teach it to you and see you in the next video take care bye